Good morning. We are Group 9 and today we are going to present to you the solution to the financial detective case study by providing a financial analysis of the companies Apple and Cray. As a brief introduction to the companies, we must understand that both operate in the tech and computer industry. In one hand, Apple, which follows a vertical integration strategy, specializes in consumer electronics, software and online services. In the other hand, Cray is a supercomputer manufacturer which at the same time specializes in the manufacturing systems for data storage and analytics. While Apple addresses its products towards all the households and businesses, Cray specifically addresses its products towards government agencies, universities and commercial businesses. Now we are going to start the financial analysis and comparison between the companies. In terms of net PPE, property plan and equipment, we must point out that Apple proportionally doubles Cray on the amount it spends. Apple's net PPE, which is 2016, amounted to roughly $27 billion, constituted 8% of the total assets, while Cray's net PPE only constituted 4% of the total assets. Even if both companies require tech investments, the difference in property plan and equipment investments could be caused by the fact that Apple's strategy needs a higher investment in order to operate, such as owning its own Apple stores, while Cray doesn't have or need such physical presence. These percentages might not seem high if we compare them with the percentages of other industries. However, this is because the industry does not require such a high capital expenditure in order to grow. Now, in regards to goodwill and intangibles, we have seen that these constitute a very low portion of Apple and Cray's assets. Both companies practically have no goodwill as they have not acquired any considerably large companies taking into consideration their own size. Apple has acquired more than 100 companies, However, all relatively small, and Cray, instead of acquiring other companies, it was acquired by HPE. Therefore, Apple's 3% and Cray's 2% of goodwill and intangible assets is probably just based on the company's intangible assets such as their patents, licensing agreements, and copyrights. Since Cray's long-term debt and percent of liabilities and equity is zero, we can assume that they have no debt. Contrarily, Apple's is 18%, which is fairly low given that equity is 41% meaning a debt-equity ratio of 0.44. Since Apple has significant cash and short investments, then debt is not much of a concern. In fact, their capital structure success comes from their ability to leverage debt and increase equity, which can be seen by their low debt-to-equity ratio. When comparing price-to-earnings ratio, we see that Craze 22 almost doubles Apple's 12.8, most likely as a result of the considerable growth they have experienced due to an increase in their customer base, as growth expectations are often associated with higher PE ratios. However, it is not high enough to signal an overvaluation. Moreover, Apple's relatively low PE ratio is associated with cheap companies to invest in, but only the latter applies, given that Apple is one of the most profitable companies in the world and has consequently a relatively high share price. With price-to-book value, however, Apple's 5 almost doubles Cray's 2.8, yet both have a somewhat high PB ratio, meaning that investors value the company's shares more than the mere value of their assets, which is definitely the case with Apple. Nonetheless, this is common in the technology industry, as it is a fast-growing industry and thus can sometimes cause companies to be overvalued. This could also be attributed to investors paying a premium to book value given high return on assets. When it comes to dividends, Cray explained in their fiscal year 2018 10K that they do not pay cash dividends on their common stock and do not anticipate to do so in the foreseeable future, which is very common among tech companies. In fact, Apple took an almost 20-year dividend hiatus but has issued stable dividends of $14 billion over the past four years, regardless of differences in net income, fluctuating the now 21.8%. This moderately low ratio results from reinvesting, especially in R&D as for the Tim Cook doctrine. Both the current ratio and quick ratio can be analyzed jointly, as they will give us similar insights in short-term liquidity of the corporations at hand by comparing current assets to current liabilities, and then comparing cash and account receivables to current liabilities. In terms of liquidity ratios, company F triples company E with respect to the current ratio. And with the quick ratio, Cray more than doubles Apple. A high ratio implies a great ability from Cray to pay off current liabilities. This impressive liquidity quantity allows Cray to have a bigger purchasing power for their highly costly supercomputer production. However, this may also mean that Apple is more efficient with their cash uses. While Cray follows a more risk-averse approach 
in a more defensive manner, or conservative, as provided in the text. Apple having more innovative and differentiated product line might reinvest more cash back into the R&D in order to keep up with their market. Account receivables turnover is calculated by dividing sales revenue over average total assets. In other words, what the external reviewer of the ratio wishes to analyze is how efficient the company is at managing account receivables throughout the fiscal year. Receivables turnover is at the highest with Apple, with a 13.6 mark, almost triplicating Cray's ratio at 5.3. As provided in the text, Apple has a completely different customer base, in other words, retail customers, while Cray's is government agencies, businesses and institutions. Fitting with the latter entails increased amounts of receivables, while with retail customers, Apple is able to convert account receivables to cash more rapidly. Cray's products are also more expensive, thus the client's ability to pay is thwarted. With this turnover rate, we get information in regards to how efficient the firm is at managing inventory by computing cost of goods sold over average inventory throughout the financial period. There is a vast difference between Apple's 62.8 inventory turnover and Cray's 3.9. Apple utilizes inventory in the most efficient way, while also sustaining potent sales and low inventories. Cray's low 3.9 ratio might also indicate the inverse story. However, it is most likely explained by how they operate manufacturing processes, as Apple's integration from chip production to retail stores allows for a much longer inventory use, thus surging inventory turnover. Moving on to the fixed assets turnover. Apple's turnover is lower at 10.8, while Cray stands at 22. Cray's higher ratio indicates that the company is more efficient than Apple at generating sales with the use of their fixed assets. The reason for Apple's lower turnover may be that the company has invested too much in fixed assets, or recently made a large investment, or that the company is in need of bringing new products to the market with the objective of stimulating sales. This reasoning may be justified since Apple owns everything from manufacturing plants to their global retail stores. On the other hand, Cray's value is likely due to their growth and hence the ability to generate sales with a lower amount of fixed assets. In regards to the total debt, total assets, Apple's debt to assets ratio is 58.9% and Cray's ratio is 29.1%. This ratio is an indication of how the company uses its debt to finance the assets. With these values, we can conclude that 58.9% of Apple's assets are financed by debt and the remaining 41.1% is financed by the equity of shareholders. With respect to Cray, 29.1% of the company is financed by debt and 70.9% is financed by owner's equity. Now, Apple's long-term debt to total stockholders equity ratio is 44.8 while Cray's is zero. This ratio value exhibits how much of the company's assets are financed by long-term debt. With Apple's value being higher than that of Cray's, meaning that Apple is taking on more debt and as a result exposing themselves to more financial risk. The value of 44.8 means that Apple's long-term debt accounts to almost 44.8 times their shareholders' equity. In regards to Cray, the zero means that the company's long-term debt value is well below their stockholder equity value. It's safe to assume that this indeed is the case considering the size of Apple. The value of Apple's interest coverage ratio is 97.2, and in respect to Cray, the data was not deemed to be a meaningful figure. The interest coverage ratio is a value which indicates the ability of a company to pay its debts. Apple's ratio is considered very high, and that goes in line with the text since Apple is a large company in a position to be able to pay back its lenders. Cray likely has a very low interest coverage ratio, which may be explained by the company having lower current earnings, and while Cray has been experiencing growth, this ratio may suggest that the company isn't in the position to grow in the future. With regards to the net profit margin, we have to say that Apple makes around 23% of profits out of every sale they make, while Cray is making almost 40%. Consequently, their net profit margin is six times higher than Cray's, making Apple six times more profitable than Cray. This is a product of Apple being the most profitable company in the world, and this is due to the cost structure and the leverage and the incredible brand awareness, something that may surely constitute a big intangible asset for them. Following the point of their cost structure, we must consider that most of the manufacturing and assembling takes place in China, where manufacturing and labor costs are just a fraction of these in the Western world.
Regarding the, their assets turnover and return on equity, we have to say that Cray is making a more efficient use of their assets when it comes to generating revenue in comparison to Apple. This is used to the fact that Cray manufactures its own products, getting significant return from their property, plant, and equipment, while Apple relies on companies like Foxconn, Pegatron, and Wistron to employ hundreds of thousands of workers to assemble Apple devices in China. With regards to return on equity, you have to say that Apple's return on equity is significantly higher than Cray's, almost nine times higher. Higher. This tells us that Apple is is making nine times more revenue with respect to their equity than Cray. It is interesting because although Cray was the leader in, in comparing their asset turnover, when you include the liabilities in the equation, you see that Apple is making way more revenues in comparison to their equity, which is assets and liability, although Cray is making slightly more revenue in comparison to only their assets. This leads us to the, to the assumption that Apple's finances, his activities, in a more efficient manner, or better said, is able to do business without a large constraint in liabilities. So, different to assets turnover in the sense that return on assets measures efficiency in terms of profitability, while assets turnover is a ratio of total sales or average sales. Same way it happens with the return on equity, Apple is better than Crane making profit out of assets, almost 10 times better. In summary, Apple has a proven better profit generation than Cray with respect to both equity and assets, while it is true that Cray makes more revenue from assets than Apple. This supports our argument that Apple is very good at managing costs and thus better in profits than Cray, while the latter makes more revenue from their assets. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed. Let us know if you have any questions.